When you think of the characters and everything, and then it's like the minute you do, you have to explain everything, like how they ended up there and who they are and what they've done. So I was just like, well, you make a vampire, you got to figure out when they became a vampire and how and stuff. I had to explain you this, I'm sure. It was like in the beginning. Oh, yeah. The, oh, this is, this is amazing to see. Yeah, it's like... So this is the history of the girl specifically. Yeah, this was like the girl's like whole timeline. So it was like See, this 18, is the thing, like imagine, imagine, you know, I read the script, <laughs> I have a sense of the movie that you want to make, and then I come to your house and I'm like, wait a second, you've built a history for this person? Yeah. Look, I'm doing all the math of her ages. Unbelievable. Like, 1899, there's a heat wave. She was going to die, and a vampire came and took her off the balcony. At 19. Yeah. And from 1929 to 1959, she really was like, she was like cruising and like really into music. Mm -hmm. Hungary, Morocco, Turkey, this is when she like saw Elvis. When I did all the stories for the girl, it was all like pre-stories. So it's like 186 years pre the time of the movie. So all the stories from the comic are like funguses that grow backwards, like into the past. I love comic books. They're so romantic and awesome. When I was making Girl, all those stories, all the things that were the DNA and the fabric of the film gets to live on in the comic books. And the cool thing about a graphic novel then is, is like all the stuff you couldn't do in the movie because it's like too, like you're like, oh, and the vampire, she could jump on top of buildings and do this or that, but it's like, you can do that, but you can do anything in a graphic novel. It's like she can be up on top of a light post or, you know. Whatever. Michael DeWeese, a really super, super talented, amazing artist with the drawing. Uh, issue number two is the one that kind of explains how she ended up at Bad City. It is so awesome because she's in the desert. And she went through like a phase of like severe depression. She's like, I'm gonna kill myself. Fuck it, I'm gonna go to the desert and just like let the sun kick me up. Every morning when the sun's about to rise, she fucking chickens out and digs down into the earth and hides. It's like this really esoteric kind of existential like dilemma, like a vampire, you know, like it's hard to die. It's just like the ultimate emo hipster on steroids because it's like 180 years of, it'd be like me, like, if you look at my house, there's like books and shit everywhere. So imagine that, like times 50. It's like being a hoarder. God, it was so fun making her room. I wasn't gonna get permission to use Michael Jackson's poster or Madonna's poster and the Bee Gees posters. You're like, okay, well, it's Bad City. It's not the real world. It could be anything. And so it's gonna be like this fusion mutation. I have the posters here. Will you, will you grab them out of the closet in the office? Tina. Will you come and be like my Vanna White? Sure. He's like baby bro, but we're cousins, so. We've been making shit together since we were like, you know, out the uterus. Yeah, I produced A Girl Walks Alone at Night, and um, Larry and I are the team. Just, just, just pull down the bottom. Yeah, there's Margaret Atwood as Madonna. Amazing. I met Margaret Atwood at Comic-Con. I asked her and she was like, hell yeah. So beautiful. This is the one you really want to. There you are. Look. I don't think that that's what I look like. <laughs> what do you mean you don't think that? You wish that that's what you look like. Are you what? kidding? Yeah. Look at really? This is like, you should just wear this. You should tape it to your face and go to Jones and get a fucking latte. <laughs> well, he's especially proud of this one. Tarasinak is like thriller in Farsi, but it actually translates to scary. Because I couldn't think how to like translate thriller. <laughs> oh, amazing. You, we have to show this one. <laughs> Elijah really fits. <laughs> of all the geek detail stuff, Yeah. like last night in that screening, that was the first time that I heard an audience laugh at what the tattoo on his head says, the pimp. Oh my God, what like, is the tattoo? I don't think I've ever known. It says, Jaw Cash, which literally translated, it's pussy puller. Yes. Pussy stretcher. Pussy stretcher. Yeah, 
That's like it's a euphemism for a pimp. It's intense. It's like really dirty. My mom drew that. Your mom did? Yeah, all of his handwritten hey, tattoos mom, were done you, by my mom. I'm like, mom, I need you to make you the calligraphy for right Write pussy stretcher, mom. Pussy puller, stretcher, jacket. <laughs> Amazing. The joy I feel designing a gangster is like a joy, like a five-year-old girl feels like brushing her fucking Princess Barbie's hair. It's like the fucking best. I mean, because I love a gangster. I love Bobby Peru and Wild of Heart. Bobby Peru, just like the country. I love Drexel from True Romance. I know I'm pretty. I love Travolta and Jackson from Pulp Fiction. I fucking love a gangster. I love the ant word. I love their music, but I just love Ninja. Ninja was like very clearly the physical like manifestation of like what he was gonna look like. Especially with like a mega gangster, it's like they're the biggest person in the room. It's funny though, because like Dom, if you meet him in the real world, he's like this super handsome, like clean, clean cut guy. I remember the first day on set when I saw him like full on, and I was just like, I was completely overwhelmed by him. Because it's like a powerful, powerful presence. When someone looks like that, it is like the tiger in the room. Like you feel it. There's like an electricity to someone like that. All the tattoos all over him, you know. That's like, hats go off to Lily. Because there's not one thing in this film or a part of what I did that she wasn't a part of. She gives that room for you. You understand, you kind of, you get into her head and you get it. You get what she wants and where this thing is going. When we were getting ready to make the film, I gave each of the actors playlists of music that was just like, this is what music is your, the vibe of this character. So I gave Dom a whole lot of like techno. <laughs> I just like picture this pimp like just doing shitloads of blow and fucking listening to techno and like doing sit-ups. Each song that she picked was so specific to the scenario that was taking place. The music of this film is bar on some of the best music I've heard in film, hands down. I can't wait for that soundtrack. I like it when people say they like the film or whatever. When people say they like the music, it gives me a calm sense of peace unmatched by anything else. That's what's so cool about a film is it's like your passport into some other world, into other music, into other things. Masuka's here now. What up, Masuka? I never wanted you for the movie. I just didn't think you were good looking enough. I thought he was uh, a little too fat. Sorry, it's true. But now I see him different because he's a fucking star. He'd show up on set. It was like he knew exactly, like with Arash, like he loved Arash. The only person he didn't like was the pimp, and that's because he's like really method. Like Masuka is like a method actor, right? He kind of looks like Yoda if you go like this. When 1,000 years old you are, look as good you will not. Does he look like Yoda? He does, right? He's so diverse. People are like, why did you set it in Iran? Well, it's set in my brain, and my brain is, yeah. it's got Iran, and it's got America, and it's got California mall country. I feel like people have a really hard time processing the idea of an American movie set in Iran. They want it to be an Iranian movie, and I really don't think that it is. It's not really an Iranian film, and it's also it not an American is. film, but like, what are we? Yeah, exactly. It's not like made the by is like, like a, a pure Iranian either. Am I Iranian? Am I pure? Yeah, well then that's what's cool about it is like there isn't this sort of voice out yeah. there. Yeah. We don't have something like this. I think to like yeah. there's some cool music we can be like, this is Iranian, that's cool. But I can't think of another movie that like takes this space. <laughs> My secret hope is that that there is a world of people in Iran that see the film. They and that everything. is what I'm so thrilled about. Oh, dude, they get everything. I remember when I went there, and I was like, I'm going to be like the one with all the cool Western pop culture stuff. And they, <laughs> my cousin knew like I'm all the lyrics them. to like Eminem songs right. and like everything. 
They knew everything. They were like, oh yeah, I saw Spider-Man too, you know. That's they get crazy. everything black market. Right. So it's like, I know and am looking forward to when the DVD comes out and gets like pirated, like that they'll all get it. With making a film, it's like a really cool thing because you're basically like harvesting inside your brain something and then all these people that come and make the film with you it's like they're on a vision quest with you it's like the search for real intimacy and a real connection with people and i'm just gonna do the shit that's like my insides so if someone likes it or wants to know about it then that's my friend you know i think my biggest like fear or like question with working with people yeah it's like i don't want to be surrounded by technicians there's a lot of people that can light something and make something look nice yes but it's that same like can we get into each other's spirit and soul yes because it's about more than that it's it about more than what you're capable of bringing to it, it technically yeah i think one of the the greatest elements that you can glean from having worked on something is the relationships that you make with the people that you make it with yeah which transcends yeah. the movie it goes into the film and then it also transcends the film too yeah the more i think about it and i've been watching the whole thing it's like i think maybe i make films to make friends oh that's beautiful I think you just do to see who your friends are. That's beautiful. You know? Like, really? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I was, I was like, this is gonna happen. You start getting that, like, glowy, kind of, like, almost, like, shroomy feeling. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, realizing all the conversations we've had, and it's all been recorded and filmed, and I'm just kind of, like, super fucking nervous about it. <laughs>